Hi, I'm Brianne Burnson with Plum Fabulous Foods, and today I wanted to show you how I prepare for my spring planting. So this is the time of the year where we're not really doing much out in the garden, but it's the time that we are preparing to go out and do our big planting in the spring. So I wanted to show you the kind of the thought process I go through where I sit down and I look at my garden journal and I plan out where things are going to go. I look at what we did last year and how those yields turned out. Um, and I just plan out what I'm going to plant of each kind of crop because this is also the time of year where I start planting my own seeds. And in order to plant my own seeds, I have to know how much of each crop to plant. So I want to walk you guys through that process. Okay, so I look at what I did last year. So this is my garden journal and this is my, you can see my 2022 spring planting guide. So my garden is um, kind of long and narrow. So I have a map here of uh, half my garden and on this side I have the other half of the garden. And I have this drawn to scale, that's why I really like these books. Um, I'm a land surveyor by trade and so these are field books that we would use out in the field. They're, they're meant to be written on in the rain. Um, they don't smudge very easily, so they're really good for garden journals. And then I can draw stuff to scale because we've got some grid paper here. So you can see how I've got, I've even got my walkways laid out and I've got uh, my beds and I don't have to draw like every single square foot on my garden plan, but I have an idea of how big the, gar the, the beds are. And then I mark on here sort of my plan of what I'm gonna plant in each bed. And then uh, it's the same thing for the other half of my garden here. And uh, I kind of keep a running total here of what I plan on planting. So last year I did 30 pounds of potatoes, I did 100 tomatoes, I did 12 eggplant, and so on. I can go through there. So as the year is going, I weigh everything that comes out of my garden, and I keep a running total here. So these are all the yields from my garden over the years. And so I can kind of keep track of how much I planted and how much it yielded. So let's look at potatoes, for example. I did 30 pounds of potatoes last year, and I yielded 354 pounds of harvest. And, um, and then I try to think back to myself. Like, I know we were able to sell some potatoes. I know our family likes to eat about 200 pounds of potatoes. And so I kind of keep that in mind as I'm calculating stuff. Same thing with tomatoes. I know I planted 100 tomato plants last year, and I got 360 pounds of tomatoes from those plants. And I just kind of think back to myself and think, did I have enough to can? Did I have enough to sell? Was that a good fit for us? Okay, the other thing that I like to keep track of is where I planted stuff last year. It's really a good idea for pest management if you could try to rotate where you put things and try to not put things back in the same spot for at least three years. So I will, um, I can't always do that with everything, but for especially the ones like squash is a really good one and tomatoes are really good because they have pests that will um, overwinter in the soil and so I will really try to plan around those as best I can. I'm going to go through now. I'm going to fill in things that I have already planted. So we just planted potatoes yesterday so that's going to be the first thing. You can see I've got my blank sketch here of our garden. I'm going to go through and fill in the things that are not going to change and so we've got potatoes in these beds here. I know I have a bed of um, onions over here that are not going to be ready for a couple more months. Um, I've got a bed of walking onions over here. I'm going to have to go count and check which bed it is in our garden. Uh, this is also a where it's really helpful to know how long it's going to be before you harvest something. So I have a lot of things in my garden right now that are not ready to be harvested, and yet I have to start planning a month from now what needs to go in there and so some things like my walking onion bed that's not gonna those aren't gonna be harvested anytime soon that bed's gonna continue to be de dedicated to that my my bed that has my Swiss chard in it that's gonna be dedicated to that but you kind of have to get a feel for when things are gonna come out and when those beds are gonna become available so um, I have several beds that have uh, cabbages in it that are probably gonna take another two months before they mature and so those beds um, I am going to save for when I want to plant uh, cantaloupe and watermelon in about two months from now. And you have to keep those things in mind as you're planning what you're going to seed out now. So just real quick about seeding things out. I seeded out my tomatoes, eggplant, and peppers back in the middle of December. And I always shoot to do about 100 tomatoes. And I want to figure out where those beds are going to be first because that's one of my crops I really, really love. Those plants take a long 
long time to grow which is why we start back in December so that they're ready by March 15th to go outside. Where I start my plants, and we're gonna cover this in another video, but where I start my plants inside on my plant growing shelf, I can only do 600 plants at a time. And so I start my, my tomatoes, eggplant, and peppers in December, and then um, it takes a good 12 weeks for those things to grow into the, a good size before you put them out in the garden. But it only takes things like squash and cucumber and okra about four weeks to grow before they're a good substantial size. If I started those seeds 12 weeks ago, they would be giant plants like harvesting fruit already by now. So you have to get a good feel for what plants, like how long seeds need to germinate and grow. And so I, I kind of break my book up into that. So here I've got my um, potatoes are kind of separate because we use seed potatoes, but tomatoes, eggplant, sweet peppers, and hot peppers. These are my ones that are going in back in December. And then as I'm moving these plants outside, um, I, I like to harden them off out here on my front porch. As those are coming outside and starting to harden off in the weather, I've got my shelf space freed up so that I can do all of these guys here. And I'm going to seed these out today. And that's my yellow squash, zucchini, scallop squash, okra, cucumber, butternut squash, and spaghetti squash. And those are going to be ready in four weeks to come out here. And when those come out to the garden, then my shelf space inside will be freed up so I can plant my cantaloupe and watermelon starts. And then we have some things that we direct seed. So our bush beans, beets, um, some corn we like to do, and then also carrots too. So this guide isn't just going to help me keep track of what is getting planted where. It's going to help me keep track of how many I need to grow and when I need to plant them inside. So these are going to be, today is the 11th. These guys are going to get started on about March 15th. And so as I'm going through here, if I look at what I have available, and um, I see, well, I've only got three beds I can plant squash in because all these other beds are spoken for, then that kind of, I may have to adjust. Well, instead of getting to do 30 squash this year, maybe I can only do 24. And so you just kind of have to play with those numbers. Okay, so I just finished doing all my planning and I walked through my garden and um, made notes about what beds are gonna be ready to plant in a couple weeks and which ones are gonna need to wait until they're, um, they're done growing all the cabbages that they have in them right now. And what happened this year is we had a really late freeze in December that wiped out a lot of what we had. And so we did a, a late planting of cabbage that's later than most years that I have done it. And so typically right now, 75% of my garden would be um, ready to plant in a month. But I realized walking through my garden that I have a lot of beds. I have more beds that are not going to be ready than I normally do. And so typically when I plant um, a lot of my stuff, when I start my seeds right now, I would do like um, 30 of my squashes and um, 32 of my butternut squashes and 16 zucchinis and those sorts of things. And I really can't do that right now because those beds are not going to be ready. So um, it was a good thing that we sit down and do this process or else I may have seeded out a bunch of seeds that wouldn't have a place to go in a month. So just a couple quick notes here I want to show you um, as I'm going through this process, things that you want to keep in mind. So I know that where my potatoes are planted here, they're going to be harvested on about May 1st. And so I, I try to plan not only what I'm going to be doing right now, but what's going to go in that bed after that, whatever's in it is harvested. And so I've got a note on here that it's potatoes now and on May 1st, then they'll, they'll be corn in those beds. And then um, also over here, I've got four beds where I'm going to plant corn now, but when that corn is harvested in about 60 days after I plant it, then I'm going to go ahead and put my cantaloupe in there. So I know that I need to start my cantaloupe at a certain date so that they're ready to go when that corn is harvested. And this is how you get the maximum yield out of your garden. Our whole purpose in doing all this is how to get the maximum use of out of our space. And this is how you do it. This is this very intentional, intensive planting. Also, when I'm planting tomatoes, I always plan on doing those down the center of my beds. And then I plant bush beans on the outside edges. And that's so I can put my um, tomato trellises down the center of the bed and it's going to be easy for me to reach those. And then I put the bush beans along the edge so I can sit on my sidewalks comfortably and harvest those green beans which have to be harvested about every other day. So when I'm getting ready to plant my green beans from seeds, I can see I need 22 feet 
times six, and that's how many beans I'll be able to do. I'll probably do three different kinds of bush beans in each of these beds, and then I'll be able to count how many seeds to put in the jar so I can soak them overnight so I'm ready to plant those. Um, let's see. I know there are certain crops that are going to stay there all season. So eggplant and peppers and my heirloom tomatoes are going to be crops that stay there the whole season. They're not going to move at all. But then I have other crops like my corn that usually only grows for 60 to 90 days. And then I know that those beds are going to be free after that. And so um, I will put in, in those beds, I'll put some of the stuff that can take our heat better, like butternut squash, spaghetti squash, uh, cantaloupe, and watermelon. Um, another thing that I like to do um, when we're planting cucumbers, I always plant those along the edges of our beds. And then whatever else is in that bed, um, I have to be able to only reach it from the outside of uh, uh, edge of one side of the bed. And so I don't put... Um, a lot of things that need to be harvested, like if I had a trellis that need to be harvested on either side of that. So in my two beds here where I've got cucumbers, I'm gonna put these cattle panel trellises between these two beds, and then I'm gonna put beets in either side of those beds because I'll be able to reach in there and harvest those. So um, this is my plan for what I'm gonna be doing now. Uh, I realize I don't need to seed out quite as much as I thought. I've already got my, my seed trays here and now I'm going to be able to sit down uh, and count out exactly how many plants I can put. If you're interested in figuring out the amount of space that each of these plants take, I encourage you to get our book. Um, in the back has got a plant spacing guide that I recommend um, so you can I, get an idea of how many plants. So if we have, for instance, if we have an eight foot bed here that is four feet wide by eight feet long, and I know that my eggplant get really big, and so I'm only going to put about six eggplants in this bed right here. And so I'll come through and I'll make a little note about that. And so this bed right now has got some cabbages in it, and it says squash later. And I know if it's an eight-foot bed that's four feet wide, I'm probably going to put about eight squash plants in that bed. So I'll go through and make a note that I need to do eight squash plants, but I'm not going to seed those out of my trays until March 15th. So I know this can sound kind of um, complicated and confusing, but the more you do it, the more you'll get an idea of what your garden needs to be able to be planted intensely. And I just really encourage you to just get started, give it a try. First thing is make a map of your garden and your beds. Um, get an idea of what vegetables and, and fruits your family likes. Get an idea for which ones of those are gonna be short season crops or which ones of those are gonna be in your garden all summer or spring long. And then um, just sort of go from there. If you don't know much about individual species of vegetables or fruits, I highly recommend the Vegetable Gardener's Bible. And again, if you have any questions, you can always reach out to us. We're really happy to help people uh, answer questions. And you can check out our website for more information. And hopefully we'll have a video coming up soon showing our planting seed process. Thanks for checking us out. Bye-bye.